I personally believe that everybody should have the right to feed themselves. We really uh, need access to land, you know, to really feed ourselves and really feed our communities. This is just a part of, you know, our progression sort of on that road to freedom, ultimately. Because farming is also about land justice. The name of my farm is Mighty Thundercloud Edible Forest. One of the main differences in uh, large-scale, you know, conventional farming and the farming that I do, for one, I'm much smaller uh, in size, and being smaller in size, I can be uh, more hands-on and more intensive in my practices. So I have okra here, um, that's cantaloupe, um, squash there, cucumbers, um, you know, watermelon on this side. So I'm growing a, you know, not just one crop, but a diverse mix of crops. And some of those crops are beneficial to each other. You can plant corn, beans, you know, and squash because they just have this mutual, you know, uh, relationship with each other. Thelonious Cook's farm in Virginia uses only non-toxic methods to grow food, avoiding all fertilizers and pesticides. Doing like regenerative type practices um, also allow you to um, work yourself out of a job because the soil is starting to approve. You know, if I could show you the, the type of weeds I had in the beginning and how hard that soil was, it was hard to really, you know, uh, pull those roots up. There's literally no um, life, you know, in the soil giving it, you know, nutrients. Eventually, your plants, you know, start to respond and then you start to get, you know, better tasting food. Thelonious gets inspiration from his time in Africa doing development work. The best fruit I've ever had in my life was from Uganda. The fruit in, in Uganda was so amazing. I mean, just the, the natural environment there is a different color green. It's more vivid. It's like you're seeing HD TV versus an old TV with the big back and everything like that. It's incomparable. And then you have thousands of years of regenerative practices as well. When you monocrop um, and grow just one crop year after year, then you're exhausting the, the soil of those same nutrients year after year. And we've been doing that here in America since the 1600s. The five fields that you see over there, I haven't grown in for the past three years. Um, but this year I've opened up a few of them, you know, and I plan to plant sweet potatoes in one, winter squash in the other. And then I also rotate crops. So here I have a, uh, with my annual vegetables, I actually have a 10 year rotation. And then next year, uh, this will be potatoes and onions. Partly why, the reason why I rotate crops like that is because pests are real clever and if they know that you're going to plant the same thing next year, well they'll just make their bed right there and they'll be waiting for you. <laughs> the 
for sure. As, as a kid, I never imagined that I would be growing food later on because it was something that I strongly disliked. It was a chore. Circling back to uh, when I was working for the development organization and I spent some time, you know, overseas in Africa, I eventually returned back to the U.S. And my, I overheard my parents talking about needing to come out here and just manage the land. So I thought, no need to pay anybody. I'll go ahead and, you know, mow. And it was during those weeks of just being out here, walking around, observing nature, that I kind of fell in love with the land and decided to grow uh, food. My father was, was thrilled at the fact that I had returned to the land. He was still alive to really give me some good advice, uh, you know, uh, for that entire uh, year as well. A lot of the techniques that even I witnessed uh, in Africa, some of them were overlapping with how we grew things in my backyard growing up. So I assume a lot of the things that he learned was passed on, you know, by his mother and by his grandmother uh, and people eventually that got a lot of their knowledge from African people that had been enslaved. Nadine Burton is a farm outreach specialist with the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. She works with small farmers like Thelonious to develop their crops in a sustainable way. She is a farmer herself. I am the owner of Talawa Farms. Talawa is a Jamaican word. It means small, but not to be underestimated. So my granddad, he was a butcher and a farmer. So we didn't have to purchase anything. And he would give me my seeds. And he would plant, looking back now, probably close to a quarter of an acre. And I would plant, might be a 10 feet row. But mines, if they did germinate, they will never ever produce anything. And I could never understand that. And I was, because of that, that's my inquisitiveness. How can I grow stuff so I can eat? or can feed my family and feed my friends. My job is not just to grow or conduct research, is to educate farmers um, about how to grow the crops, how to harvest, how to package, how to market, link them with buyers. And so that's what we do here. Soil is living, it has living parts which a lot of persons don't pay attention to, dead soil cannot produce. Some crops add nutrients, some crops take out nutrients. So for example, that is why they do soybean and corn. And so soybean adds nutrient because it fixes its own nitrogen. It don't take so much from, from the soil as, as corn do. And so you want to rotate. Balance. Balance is important. Back at Thelonious's farm, preparations are underway for a workshop for farmers in the area. My name is Neve Short, and I work with Future Harvest. One of the programs that we run is a beginner farmer training program. And now that allows me to be a little bit more... Thelonious graduated, I think, in 2014 when he started his farm. It also gives me a little bit of cover. 
Future Harvest is interested in supporting and connecting with farmers that are interested in using sustainable methods that um, are grown in a way that's in balance with nature rather than constantly depleting um, our natural resources. That, that nitrogen needs to be available, you know, at that critical early, early stage. When this type of farm that Thelonious runs is, is really exploring how, how far can we take that and even creating building materials in the process so that we can have a more green building um, industry as well. Um, after 24 hours, it's dry enough to be able to hold its own weight. I've always been interested in sort of natural building and that whole green building, you know, concept. And that came um, directly from my experience traveling around Africa and seeing houses made out of bamboo or mud brick. You know, people just using the resources, you know, that they have access to. At some point, I heard about uh, hemp and the ability to use hemp as a building material. This is one way to mix it. The other way to mix it is in a, a pilot mixer. If you have access to three acres, uh, you can grow enough hemp to build a 12,000 square foot house. Come up here and look. You want to tamp harder around the edges. And that's going to be renewable. That hemp plant is also known as a good sequester of carbon, which we have an issue with right now. We need to eliminate the carbon in the atmosphere. There's a lot of benefits from the hemp. The walls are breathable, so it regulates the temperature, the humidity, it's pest resistant, fire resistant. Well, 10 years from now, you'll see a much more biodiverse, rich landscape. Um, I see this as being a demonstration farm as well, a place where uh, people can come out, they can learn. For Thelonious and Nadine, the future of farming honors the tradition of their ancestors. the history of discrimination and you know racism what it's resulted is that a lot of African Americans don't have access to land a lot of the communities you go in you know uh, you'll walk into a you know corner store and you can try but you won't find anything that's nutritious and that's resulting into a lot of diseases and you know problems you know that you see manifesting in kids And the root of this, you know, all goes back to uh, to being able to have access to locally grown, you know, food and having access ultimately to land to produce that food. Yeah, I think we're on the cusp of a large movement.